Welcome to the class. This is a new course, EC2408, that's a code, Theory of Structures 5. And uh, you've been covering Theory of Structures 1 and uh, you up to 4. I think you'll go up to 6, is compulsory. I'll be taking you through this one and uh, next semester. And uh, after that, let me mute this one. So I was uh, monitoring that uh, people are well settled in class. So I'll be taking you through this and next semesters one, uh, theory of structures five and six. And uh, although they are called theory of structures, each one of them have got its objective or like uh, what is the, the topic, what is being covered in that area? Like theory of structures one, this was on um, statics and the, the issues of equilibrium. You came to cables in theory of structures two. So now in this theory of structures three, uh, five, eh? sorry, I wanted to say theory of structures three, you are in determinate, uh, non-determinate structures. Eh? So theory of structures five, you find so many books in this. It's a new concept and uh, very nice and being employed in many areas, especially in uh, design. This is called finite element methods. And because this is your first uh, course or first um, encounter with this course, so we, we are going to have a very, uh, an introduction. I'm going to start you from the very basic. I want you to grasp the concept because uh, this is a new area and it doesn't even, well, it requires the knowledge of physics and the basics that you have covered in other theory of structures, but this is a relatively new area. You may find like sure, what we need here as a prerequisite is uh, mathematics like algebra, like uh, ODE and PDE, right? So I want to start you on a fresh ground and uh, so that you can enjoy this course. It's one of the most important courses in the Aerial Structure series that you encounter in civil engineering. And uh, very interesting, when you come to the field and you start doing your design, most of the design softwares that you are going to use, they, they, they're working behind the, what you see in the, in the screen. The working is based on finite element methods of analysis. So it's an interesting course and I hope you'll be able to enjoy it as we continue. So uh, my name is, uh, of course, uh, most of you know me, although we are, we are meeting the first time. My name is Dr. Naftre Gathemba, because I'm in the Department of Civil Engineering for the sake of the new people who will watch later on. Eh? And uh, my academic office, you can get me in the ELB 113 if you want to consult, but kindly make an appointment because sometimes we are not in the office. The, this, the building is located, the office is located next to the Dean's Office, eh? School of Civil Engineering. So you can get me there. That's my email address. You can contact me in case of any query and also my contact are there. So let's start. This is the outline of our course. We have the introduction to finite element methods and how do we apply in structural analysis. Then uh, we are going to see the matrix analysis of structures, because the finite element method employs a lot on matrices. It's like, um, in a nutshell, we are solving uh, simple, simultaneous, algebraic equations. So we arrange them in matrix form. So you remember the algebra, eh? the first year course. Eh? So we are going to be dealing with the matrices. So that's why you see the second part is matrix analysis of structures, and how do we apply in analyzing plane trusses, beams, and frames. For example, for a frame, tr frame truss, in the days past, you have been able to analyze it using the, uh, the, the method of resolution and joints or graphical method. Now we are going to see in another way, how can you analyze a truss in a finite element method. Again, uh, for the beams, you've used, for example, Castigliano, Castigliano method. You've used the area movement area method. Now we are introducing a new concept, still to analyze a beam. And you see why do we need this method and why it's sometimes superior more than the other method. Finally, we are going to see, uh, and you can see everything is introduction because as I said, this is a basic. Actually, even the course outline, eh, your course content doesn't have this that part. But in my own wisdom, I felt that it's very important for you people to know how to employ a finite element method for two-dimensional continuum. Two dimension is when we are talking of 2D. Actually, we, we might even go to 3D because in real life, things are 3D. Even though uh, you, may, you have analyzed a plane truss, uh, most of the things that you're going to encounter may be space frame, space trusses. 
So they might be more common than just a plain truss. So that's why we are going to go to two dimensional and also three dimensional as time allows. What is expected from this course? So remember the objective of this course or what you're supposed to know is that we are introducing you to a new method of structural analysis. That is the finite element method. And at the end of this course, every student should be able to follow the standard procedures of the finite element method. And you should be able now to apply the finite element method to analyze trusses, beams, frame structures, both manually. Manually, of course, um, we, we, you, are, you are doing manually initially, then manually finite element method, and then using relevant software. And I'm going to show you which software we are going to, to use. Class lab, I can see the number is okay, 104, but could you kindly encourage people to log in as much as possible? If you are 150, and especially those uh, mature entry students, I know they are working, but tell them, please, let them log in, let them just spare. My classes are short, one and a half hours, one hour, so that uh, we not have issues towards the end of, of the semester, all right? Then uh, you, you should be able to explain and apply the principle of finite element method to continuous two-dimensional problems. And as I said, we might extend to three-dimensional cases, even if it's not in your course content, for your own understanding, and also for the future. Now, the teaching methodology is as follows. We are going to have uh, lectures, physical and online. You know why we are online, because of uh, the COVID issue. Uh, lectures usually for two hours, that should be enough, sometimes one and a half hours every week. In the next, uh, I think, 10 weeks, should be able to handle course content. Then the next, like, two weeks, we can have tutorials. Then we shall have um, maybe two cuts or one CAT. Then, of course, we have practicals, interactive tutorials, laboratory work using FEA software. And I'm going to tell you which software we are going to use. I would like people to really take uh, interest in this software so that next year, uh, I know you are in fourth year, you might not have thought about it so much, but uh, as you complete fourth year, you start thinking about what kind of a project do I want to undertake in fifth year. So uh, in structural analysis or in uh, structural engineering uh, field, eh, uh, I have found many students just going for materials and going to our lab in materials. But I want people now to think of materials. Yes, it's structural engineering. We have structural materials and analysis. Let's go to the analysis side. And even if we might be limited in the, uh, the, the equipment that we have, but with these kind of softwares, we can be able to conduct experiment virtually, right? If you want to test a beam, you just need to conduct one test in the lab. Then you create a model in a finite element analysis software. Then you validate that model to show that it corresponds to the experimental results that you obtained. And then from there, you, you can run as many tests as possible virtually. You can try different parameters. So kindly find interest and also create time to do the practice. Of course, we'll be having maybe other presentation or demonstration as the lecturer will deem fit. Uh, I have some networks with me. We have some. Uh, professors from Japan, and I know they'll be willing to teach this software. So uh, with the time, we might be able to engage them. And uh, if they, they agree, of course, we can be able to have an interactive session or a simple presentation. All right. Then uh, this is the course assessment. Of course, in my case and in my courses, I never focus or my focus is not on passing just passing because you can get an A, but then uh, you cannot be able to design a, a frame structure. Uh, and then somebody with just a, a D or a C uh, can, is very good in the field. And uh, right now, and this is real, real, real life stories, we are, I'm getting complaints uh, as I interact with people from the, in the field, the engineers in the field, they tell me, oh, what's happening to you, Jake? What? These days the students, are, uh, they have got very good grades, uh, first class honors, but when we give them some basic uh, analysis, yes, they know softwares, but the theory behind they do not know. So uh, I would like, in as much as we have to pass, but let's focus on understanding. Passing is, is good and it's very important, but let's focus on understanding. So the assessment, you know, but this is just a reminder that uh, the exam constitutes 70%. And then uh, we have uh, the CAT at 30%. 
And the CAT, uh, not even CAT, CAE, eh, continuous assessment exercises, is distributed as follows. We have the cuts as 15%. Well, we can have one cut, we can have two cuts. Remember now I'm doing the class of 150, yeah? so marking two cards means 300 scripts. <laughs> uh, it's sometimes tedious. So sometimes I give one card, but we'll see. Then uh, FEM simulation practicals. Eh? So this one is lab work, but the good thing about our lab, eh? it's not like the, the physical labs, the one that we have to go to structures, materials lab. This one is on finite element analysis. So if you have got a good computer, which I believe most of you have, eh? a good laptop, you just install this software, then you are going to do your work. If you don't have, then uh, you just go to our departmental computer lab. Radio will assist you there. We install that software, and then you are going to uh, do your work there. So no one is left behind. And then, of course, assignment, 5%. So the CAT helps you to pass. Like Out of the 70%, the pass mark is 40%. So you can score 25. So you just need to fight for 15% to pass. Eh? But again, we are not just here for basic passing. You need to pass and uh, pass well. All right. Then uh, these are some references. The main reference. Now, these references I've given them, eh? they, they are the very basic. Of course, we have got some other good books you might find and uh, uh, you, you might want to use them. I'm not limiting you to this. But for you as a starter, these are some of the materials that I used to learn finite element before I advanced it. Eh? So they are very good and uh, you understand from basic concept. Not too much of mathematics. Remember, we are in structural engineering. You might get a book, a very good book in uh, finite element analysis, but the book itself is focusing on the mathematics because the people who are there maybe uh, they, they, they are scientists. They are specializing in mathematics. So they are interested in so much of the PD and OD, okay? But for us, it's application. So these books are good for you. And of course, now if, if you find now you have grasped the concept, we have a good book now with the theory behind. And I'm saying this is another. other. This one, I have a hard copy in my office if you need to read it, but uh, I might tell you it's a little bit advanced. This is a book that we used to study in uh, Japan when I was doing my doctorate course. We are learning this together with um, with the master student also. So it's a good one. You can read. But focus on the first two, and I'm going to give you this material later on. Now, let's start with the introduction. So what is FEM or FEA? Now, I'm saying FEM or FEA, you might find in different books, uh, different terminologies being used. Uh, Finite element method or finite element analysis. Both of them means the same thing. Now, this FEM is a numerical method for solving problems of engineering and mathematical physics. When you find the word uh, numerical, when you find the, the, the word uh, numerical, you are supposed to know that this is an approximation method. Remember the, the trapezoidal rule, Simpson's rule, the Rugekuta methods, numerical integrity. Yeah, you did a course, SMA, I think 20 something, 23, 70 something. Numerical methods, eh? So it was approximation method, all right? So and it's used to solve the engineering problem. So that's what FEA is. It's an approximation method using numerical uh, approaches. And we are going to see why, why this analytical method. Now, this uh, FEA is used, or its application, is, in, is used to give an approximate solution to a given boundary value problem. I hope I've not lost somebody there. Boundary value problem. And I don't want to be afraid eh? because I know most of you, when you are dealing with the PDE and ONDE, there could have been issues. But uh, I don't want to frighten you with that. We are not into that because the good thing is we are taking the PDE and the ODEs. Eh? We are using the finite element method. We simplify them to simple algebraic equations, right? So let me show you what I mean by giving approximate solution to a given boundary value problem. Now, what is a boundary value problem? Consider this case. I know you have done uh, several engineering materials in EC2206. 
And uh, sorry for those who might watch this one later on who are not uh, from JQuart. The, the codes I'm just using are to identify the units. Different universities use different codes. I think like KU, they say CV, CVS or CV something, CVL. So in, in, in JQuart for civil engineering courses, we say ECA. Yeah? All right. You have done civil engineering materials. Yeah? And uh, when you are at it, what you are doing is you had uh, you did a test. Yeah? Let me clear this. So you did uh, what we call the compression test. This is a cube. All right. Then you applied the load and you are able to get the, what is the compressing strength? Maybe it's CK. Okay. But uh, what you should notice is that although this is a simplification, when you apply a load here, for instance, the element, or if you take a particle, or this body is not only going undergoing compression. And that's why we talked about um, in civil engineering materials about um, Poisson's ratio. Because we have, uh, as compression is occurring, there is also direction, expansion. So there is tension occurring in the orthogonal direction or perpendicular direction. So when you want to describe completely, and this one again in strength of materials, you might have tackled eh? the state of stress for a body when it's subjected maybe to tension or compression. So you're going to find that there will be the, the normal stresses and the shear, shear stresses. Now, if you take an infinitesimal body or a small body inside here, and then you start analyzing it, eh? you are going to have like in each, in each phase, eh? you have the normal, and uh, the shear, the normal and the shear, or the normal uh, acting on the face in the other direction. Now, I don't want to go so much into detail about this because um, this one, uh, we are in structural analysis, but this one is in strength of materials. Eh? But I wanted to just remind you of something we call the Cauchy stress tensor or Cauchy stress tensor. I don't know whether it's written as Cauchy stress. Tensor. Now, Cauchy stress sensor is describes completely. Instead of the just the way you are talking of the compression, or you 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 handled the concrete cube as just at the compression. Now, in this case, now we are talking of being at the compression at all the stresses that are acting in all direction. And of course, we consider the three direct orthogonal direction. Of course, we can have uh, as many planes as possible. But for simplification, of course, in engineering and sciences. For example, we take the three in the Cartesian plane, we take the three direction. So now this, this uh, stress is covered, the Cauchy stress tensor is described by this, this uh, equation here. Now again, this is what I was saying. I don't want to frighten you because now these are partial differential equation. That is the stress the no, no, normal stress in the direction x respect to the face x but when you go to y there is the inference of the stress in this direction in the in the face the plane x the plane x is in the horizontal is in the sorry not in the horizontal yeah, yeah on the horizontal plane this one then the plane y is on this side and then the plane z is on this side so what we are just saying is to describe that stress of course the b these are force vector eh? The applied force, eh? they can be on the side of the zero. We have just taken them to one side. So the combination on each face, for example, on the plane X, we get this is a combination of stresses. So now the combination of this stress tensor and uh, the boundary condition, that one is what constitutes the boundary value problem. The boundary value problem constitutes the either OD or PD plus the boundary condition, we are able to get the boundary value problem. This is the problem that we are solving. We want maybe to solve the stresses in this member or in this body in a certain direction. Now, what we're now saying is that you just take this condition, we use the SEM tools, eh? we simplify this equation, we are going to end up having very simple linear algebraic equation. And the linear algebraic, you know, 
y is equals to mx plus c. Now, those one we know they can be solved very simply manually or with the computer. Why computers? Because we have, at the end of the day, because we are analyzing a structural member, which might be, uh, like, like for example, a framed structure, we are going to have very many equations, algebraic equations. So in, in short, this algebraic equation can be handled in a computer. And the, why we use computers in finite element analysis is not they are, they are not doing magic, is that they, are, they have the computation power. They can solve a thousand and a thousand of equation in a very short, short time. For you, when the matrix, when you are solving an equation, algebraic equation in, or simultaneous equation in like three or four unknowns, eh? uh, uh, past four unknowns, then uh, you, 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 are, you start being limited. Your computation power uh, becomes limited. But now the computers come in hard there. And um, initially, when this method started, eh, it started in around 1946, the finite element method. But that time is when you used to have uh, very large or very humongous computers, eh? what we call them the frame, we call them the framed uh, uh, frame computers. So they, they were not available to no more, uh, no, no, more, no more citizens. So they were just for institution and for this large organization. But by 1960, when now small computers, micro, uh, small computers started coming to play, the PCs, eh? that's when now the, this method became very popular. So this method is not as old as the one you are using as Castellano method. Like, eh? This one just started in the 19th, 1960s. It's when it became popular, the finite element method. Now, so the, the, the role of computer is that we are describing a complicated uh, structure. We have many algebraic equation which might be difficult for us to handle. That's why we employ computers. And a computer, of course, when you want to draw, you use a computer, but you know you use a certain software, for example, AutoCAD or Archicad, right? When you want to design, yes, you use a computer, but there's a software, for example, Procon, Stud Pro, Revit Structure, and so on and so forth. So for finite element analysis, yes, you use a computer, but you have a certain number of software that we, you can use. Now, this, the list is not uh, comprehensive, but uh, we have like uh, Adina, Abacus, ANSYS, and this is in your note in page five. I'm just uh, outlining them. Diana, Adina Abacus here. We are going to, to use uh, this software, Abacus. Right? Abacus. So now, it's there on you. Now you can now start Googling after this class to see what it does and uh, what other people have been doing with it. All right. Then uh, let's move to the next slide so that we are together in this. Now, why do we need finite element method? Now, Sometimes, if you look at these simple shapes with the known uh, geometry, if you want to calculate the area, you can want to calculate the parameter, and like so on and so forth, we have got analytical equations. Very simple, we just apply them. But it comes a case when in engineering, we have complex geometry. For you who have gone to Nairobi, this is at the University of Nairobi. You can imagine you are going to design this kind of a structure. Sometimes you are dealing with the architects. Like when I started working after graduating 10 years ago my, with my bachelor's, I worked in Westland and uh, we used to deal with very, do I say sophisticated or very, I don't know which word to use, eh? but uh, the, 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 the architect, they are called um, Studio Infinity. If you have gone to Westland, you have seen those slanting buildings, building with certain shapes, carved roofed, roofs. Like for example, the roof with uh, uh, in the University of Nairobi graduation ground, eh? the one that was constructed when Pope was coming, you see that kind of a roof shape. Eh? Of course, it's a shell. So for, for the design that you have done and what you are tackling now, uh, you are talking of uh, rectangular beam, you're talking of uh, rectangular or even triangular slab. But 
Now, what happens when the, the shape is like this, right? What happens when this one, although I've put them here, these are more in mechanical, but in design, you are having complex geometry. Again, you may have condition where the boundary condition. Can you remember when you are talking of transits and then when the trans became uh, indeterminate, now you had to go to a little bit advanced method of analysis. Eh? The equation of static equilibrium by themselves could not be able to handle that. So you can imagine now if the boundary condition continue being more complex, because that is the reality of life. We have a complex reality, but we simplify it for analysis. Okay. So, and again, we might have a complicated uh, loading. So with complicated loading again, I'm just checking to ensure that you people, you are still together with me. Okay. Complicated loading condition. So that's why now the, at this point, the analytical methods become almost impossible. They are limited in capacity to do the analysis. So what we do is that we have to do approximation. Okay. Now, here we are having FEM versus analytical methods, and I wanted to see the comparison. Let me use an example. I don't know whether I can be able to draw a circle here. This is a circle, right? And then uh, you already know. If, for example, you want to, 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 to check or to calculate the, the circumference, You just have to say pi d, right? But assume now our circle, let me just use it the way it is. But I want to just change slightly. I want our circle to be irregular. Something it's still a, somehow a circle, but it's irregular. We want to calculate the perimeter. Okay? So what Archimedes found before the formula for analytical method for calculating the perimeter of this circle was obtained is that they could be able to subdivide this into small segment, okay? Subtended from the center, and then they could be able to obtain, actually this is how pi was obtained, the 3.14 to blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the more you reduce the sizes of this segment, the more you can be able to come closer to the reality. I hope I can, I wish I can use a different car for that. Okay, so for irregular bodies, eh, if you can be able to subdivide this into small part, small part, small segment like that, which are straight section eh, or linear, now, with this small section, we me measure the length, the length, the length, the length. At the end of the day, when we do the summation of the different length, Li, all the way to Ln, we are able to get what is the total length or the circumference of this body, right? So you see, in this case, we had uh, the formula, which you can use directly. But now, when the geometry becomes complicated, from that case now, we move to estimation or approximation method. Now, here, I would like you to have something like a table like this. So that on this side, you have, uh, you are comparing between the empirical method or analytical method. This side, you have the analytical method. This side, you have uh, finite element method or FEA. So we are saying the first one is that in analytical method, for the case of our circle that we had, okay? So if the issue was determination, let me, let me just repeat it again here for ease of understanding. Let's say, we are approximating we're using very large subdivisions. Okay. We are approximating now 
the radius of this body. Remember, it's you might not see the logic now because it's regular. It's it's uh, it have got a um a regular shape or geometry that you already know the the formula. But uh, consider when we had an irregular shaped body circle. So what we are saying is that for this length, the radius is only true at this point and at this point. Otherwise, if somebody comes, because remember, you don't have a method, you don't have a way of obtaining the area of the perfect body of the of the whole body. So you are approximating. So if somebody comes and then measures the radius at this point, it will be slightly less by this value here, this part here. Okay. So one of the shortcomings for analytical method, when you use the method like the formula, analytical formula, analytical formula as well, uh, formulation are those where they can be obtained from basic principle from mathematics. Like you can derive the area of a circle or the perimeter of a circle. Okay. So for analytical method, one of the things that you find that the solution is varied. Solution is varied at all location or at infin infinite location. So solution is varied at infinite location. So at any one point, when you use the formula, the radius will always be true. Because now we are saying is from here, you measure from here. When you use the formula, so, uh, circumference is two pi r. So in short, r is equals to circumference of a two pi. So as long as you use this formula here, at any one point, the radius is exact. Now for finite element method, the area or, or the radius is only exact at discrete points. And we are going to see the name of this point. So any other location is an approximation. So what does this mean? The more we subdivide our body, okay, the more our answer becomes accurate. All right. Again, number two, analytical method, we can be able to obtain the solution for this body overall at one time. Okay. But uh, because we just use this formula, we are able to get the answer for the whole body simultaneously. But uh, for uh, FEM, we are going to get approximate values at discrete points, okay? Again, analytical method is more accurate. FEM is approximation. However, analytical method is limited. When the geometry becomes complex, loading condition becomes complex, boundary condition, and so on and so forth. I hope now you have understood the table that I've given in page three, the comparison between the two methods, what you have been using, but now we are coming to finite element method of analysis. Now allow me to move further ahead because today is just as an introduction and uh, not very complex. So some common application of finite element method, we use them in mechanical, especially in mechanical engineering and aerospace, in the design of lightweight, you know, the airplane. Eh? When you're designing your airplane, they have to make they have to make the aircraft as light as possible, but as rigid as possible, so that they can be able to withstand the, the weed loading. Okay. So they use the, the FEM is highly employed in the area of aeronautical and automotive engineering. So in structural analysis, of course, uses in uh, static and uh, linear and nonlinear analysis, fluid flow for those in uh, water engineering, heat transfer in physics, electromagnetic in uh, electrical engineering, soil mechanics, that's engineering, acoustically in sound, and biomechanics. But for us, we are focusing on this. Structural stress analysis. And we are going to limit ourselves to static. Dynamic is when we have vibration, and that is a course we'll cover next semester. So we are going to see finite element analysis, and we are going to cover linear and nonlinear. Linear in class, in classwork, in theory work, nonlinear in softwares. 
So linear, of course, when you hear the word linear is when the hooks lose apply, eh? that uh, the force or the stress is direct proportional to strain. Eh? But when the permanent deformation start occurring, like for example, when you are doing a test in the lab and you are testing a steel bar, so you know the elastic limit up to the limit of proportionality, but that now it starts deforming plastically. So that's a, now when we talk of nonlinear uh, finite element analysis or nonlinear analysis. Good. So far, so good. And uh, let's see now the advantages of using the finite element method of analysis. Of course, this one, you can just enumerate them even without uh, many question. First, we are able to model irregular body. We can be able to model irregular bodies with ease. This one analytically might be problematically problematic. Then uh, another thing is that uh, we are able or to handle uh, general road condition. This includes both complex and uh, easy, so we can handle road condition easily. Um, sometimes the material. Like, like when you are testing the concrete or when you are testing steel, you assume homogeneity. You assume isotropic material. Isotropic material is material which is uniform in all direction. Now, homogeneous material, of course, it might be uniform, but not in all direction. Like Tiba, if you have a, if you have Tiba, Tiba section, that's why we always explain, uh, we always specify, this is, for example, this around the grain, eh? this around the grain. So there is a stress around the grain and there is a stress across the grain. And you find that this value differs for, for Tiba. But for steel, for example, mild steel, as long as it's homogeneous, so the stress is the same on both direction. So you find like, we can say Tiba is homogeneous, but not necessarily isotropic. But for case like steel, mild steel, uh, as long as the material is uniformly distributed, it should be have the same strength or stress in all direction. Now, again, another another advantage that you are going to realize when we use a finite element method is that we are able. Okay, of course, we have talked about the, the material differences. We can be able to uh, address this material differences they can be able they are hardened with ease again we can be able to handle unlimited number of boundary condition we are not limited in terms of uh, boundary conditions okay uh, we can be able to use different element sizes you can include dynamic effect there are a number of uh, advantages of this method as we are going to see as we start occurring using examples so you can see now how powerful this method start becoming as you go by so the basic concept of fem so we will be telling you the basic concept this fem is about approximation so what, what is the concept behind what, what is the underlying concept behind this so what you just do is that in real life we have a complex body a structure is complex. So consider even not so complex a structure. Consider just a case when uh, we have um, uh, just just uh, just a truss, right? This truss might be complex or not. It can be just like that. But the boundary condition here is that this is fixed. This is fixed. So it becomes indeterminate. Eh? So it's fixed. Fixed. Sorry, actually, these, these are not boundary. These, these are just like signs of reaction. Eh? So it's better to use this. Eh? Usually, we, we always try to be consistent because as an engineer, you, are com you should be able to communicate even to those people who are not speaking your language eh? by drawings. That's why we do drawings. I can be able to take a drawing down by in Chinese and understand. Yeah, <laughs> that's the beauty of engineering. So that's why we try as much as possible to, to be consistent. Okay, like now we've been using F as a force. So even if 
you find this F somewhere else, you don't understand language, you might think, oh, this is forced. But if I start saying stress F, I'm being inconsistent. All right. Now, uh, if, if you, you see this is a simple truss, but once the boundary condition are like this limiting, eh, so it becomes complex, we want to simplify it. So we do what you call discretization. Very key word, you can underline in your notes if it's not underlined or in your notebook. And what do we mean by discretization? Because this is a very important concept in finite element analysis. This is dividing the body into smaller bodies. You define your model. You remember the circle? The circle which was irregular or even regular, we subdivided it into smaller bodies. So when we subdivide this into smaller bodies, eh, we say, in some books, they use the word breakdown. We are breaking down our bodies so that now we can start hardening. You can extract this one element and start hardening this as a linear element. So with this linear element, we can be able to, 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 to use algebraic equation, simple algebraic equation to, to solve. Okay, so discretion is that breaking down into smaller bodies. Now, these small bodies, like the one I've extracted here, this is the one that we call finite element. Okay, finite element. And this is like a, a bar element, a line element. So that the different line element, one, all the way maybe there are, there are 10, I can say you add the length. If I wanted to get the perimeter, I just need to add the length of element one, element two, element three, element four. I'm just using perimeter to simplify, but when you come to structural analysis, of course, you know you are talking about the deformation, stresses, strains, what else? Uh, moment. But for this case, we kind of uh, stick to stress, strains, and deformations. Okay, so we take a complex body. It could be complex in terms of material, in terms of geometry, in terms of boundary condition. And then through breaking down, we simplify. Now we have a simple analysis. So in the real world, we have complex body. We simplify it, we idealize it as in terms of a physical model. Like now in our truss here. So if I just go back now to our truss here, our truss, if I want to break it down, I'm going to, to have this element here. I'm going to have to break it down here. I have element, an element there, another 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 one here, another one here, another one here, and another one here. So these are what we, we refer to as element, or we are referring to as finite element. Finite, they are not infinite, okay? Then uh, these bodies, these finite elements, they are interconnected. Where they are meeting, they are interconnected by what we refer to as node. So at this junction, we have what we refer to as node. So now you have the new terminology, finite element and nodes. So nodes are the node point or node. They are common point between two or more elements. Now, once we simplify, so we have, the simpli we have simplified our model to finite element. Now we can have a mathematical model for each of these elements, depending on what you want to calculate. We can have a mathematical model. We are going to see how to formulate that. And then, of course, discrete size mesh model. For each of these, the word mesh will come from the case when, whereby if we have uh, something like this, eh? if we have If we have a rectangle and then uh, we can uh, subdivide it or we can discretize it like that. Eh? So you find this term will be very common when you start doing the software work. We subdivide it like that. So we end up having, these are small elements, these are nodes. 
So our node, nodes are here, node, node. These are elements, different elements. So you can see it's kind of create a mesh. So finite element mesh. Okay. Then once we have that mesh, this is a basic concept. We, I was explaining the basic concept. I don't want to go ahead of myself because we said we are going step by step. So we have a complex object in reality. We break it down through discretization. We are going to have uh, element and nodes, simplified physical model. This is a physical model which is simplified. Then we can have mathematical model. That is for each element, we get the mathematics, the equation. And this one will be in algebraic. A simple job like equation and then for the overall body you have the discretized mesh okay let me stop there but there is another step that we are going to know to 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 go to later on let me just highlight it here we have broken down our 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 structure complex uh, body or object we have we start analyzing for individual element we have this mesh so we have to go back now the, our solution or our, our equation that we generate for each element we have to assemble them together again so that now we can get the response or the behavior of the whole structure. All right. So, but uh, let me not go ahead of myself because I really want you to grasp all the concepts together. So let's see and let's go ahead and see an illustration. So this is a body. Assume a plane strain. You know a plane strain. Eh? Plane strain is like a plate eh? where you assume the thickness direction is so small that we are not concerned with the stresses in that direction. So plane strain, we are only concerned with the two orthogonal direction when we are doing our analysis. That is this direction, uh, this direction, and this direction. Okay. So the thickness direction is not in concern. So if you want to do an analysis, for example, you want to get the stress at this point or the stress at this corner. Assume a case whereby there is heat here. Although we are in structural analysis, because I've used a plate, let me use heat. If you hit on this area, the heat distribution, you can have contours. The heat distribution will be different at different points. So if you want to know what is the, the heat quantity at this point, or even, let me go with a, with a country river. And I think yellow is not the best color for for men. Eh? Or I'm being biased. I'm being <laughs> okay. So if, for example, there is a load that is hanging at this point, then with the load hanging at that point, so if I want to know the deformation, remember the deformation will be something like this. So the deformation from this location, and then this assume the direction x, at the different points will be different, will be varying. Eh? So if I subdivide my beam into different members, and I want to know what is the deformation at this location, so I have subdivided into small meshes. So the meshes are now this one of them. I can call it an element. We are going to see why now the other part I was talking of a line. Now I'm talking of a rectangle because we have different types of elements. Okay. Then uh, at the location, okay, at the meeting point, the service, the point of uh, interconnection between different elements, we call them the nodes. I have subdivided my node, and now we can do what you are saying elemental or element wise calculation so per element i can be able to what is the what is the behavior now i can for example if i want to get the displacement that node for the entire domain for the entire body because i've obtained for different elements i combine them and then of course you are going to display your result in this format of course this 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 part eh, this part, you cannot be able to show these contours without using software, all right? So now with that, so this is an illustration how we are going to be handled. You have a body, you discretize it through meshing or subdividing it to different uh, into, into element level. 
you perform elemental calculation, you combine your body, then you can be able to get or obtain your results. So we have different types of finite element. For example, when you are considering like a case of uh, a truss, I started with a truss and uh, with a truss, we have subdivided our body into different elements where in this part we have a node, a node, and then we have this element, this element one, two, three, like that. So in finite element analysis, I'll be having this as a line element. Line element is one direction. So I'm just concerned. For example, at trust, we only concerned with the axial direction, axial loading. Now, for if we go ahead, eh, we can have, for example, a plane element, like the one I was talking of plane slain. Eh? So in this case, for example, when you're analyzing a plate or a shell or a slab, slab, let me talk of shell. Shell is when the thickness is too small. Slab, of course, we have to consider the depth. Eh? So in this case, we can have uh, an element. An element will be in two dim dimension, two direction. That is uh, up eh? and, uh, of course, uh, uh, in X or in Y or Z direction, but thickness is not concerned. And finally, we can have solid elements, three dimension. For example, when you talk of displacement, you talk of uh, stresses in a beam, that would be in 3D. So it can subdivide our body. For example, if we uh, give you a case here of, uh, this is a beam, 3D, of course, typical beam. So we subdivide it into finite elements like that. Okay. Like that. So you can see this single element, this one, if I can highlight this. This is one element from here coming like that, like that. So it's a, it's, it's a cuboid, it's a cube eh? or a cuboid. So this now is three dimension. Now we are going to see later on that, although we are going to put nodes, we are putting nodes at the corner, we can have high order, we call them higher order nodes, uh, element where we have node in the middle. But this one will come on later. For now, just assume that the nodes are located at the point of interconnection between the different elements. Now, we have seen the different types of uh, finite element and the application, for example, this one is a truss, this one uh, uh, in structural analysis, plate and shells and membrane in structural analysis, and in 3D, uh, displacement, stress in structural analysis. So we are going to see how to create these different elements. Of course, for, for a manual calculation, maybe for 1D and 2D, but now when you go to software, we go to 3D. All right. So you can see we have an object. We subdivide it or we discretize it using the element. So you can be able to see the element. These are 2D element and the nodes are shown. Now, example of application of it. Now, this is real, real work. Huh? This is real work. So you see, for trust, this is in the environment of Abacus. We have just taken a screenshot. We can have a trust. This trust have got different line element, 1D element. Okay. Then, uh, of course, this is the result here. Don't worry about this. This is a result of strain and stress. Eh? Then, for plane strain, of course, it's a body with. Uh, in significant thickness, so you can see the distribution. Of course, the contours, the colors you are seeing is because of the results. Eh? The result of stress and strain will be sh shown in the color contour. But for now, I just wanted you to see how we can subdivide the element. Of course, the element here are divided into maybe triangular. Eh? The M3D, for example, if you have something like this, it's closely resembles a spanner, although it doesn't have the grooves. Eh? So you can see now this is a case where we apply the 3D finite element. You can imagine if you are trying to analyze for a truss like this space frame, uh, space trust, right? Uh, you can analyze it using your method, but it'll take time. 
But for the 3D case like this one, eh, you can imagine you are trying to, to, to analyze this, to calculate the force, the torque applied that needs to open the nut here. And now you, you don't want, because if it's over a body, you are calculating the force, it's very easy. You just take this length and the applied force. Eh? But now if you want to get the stresses experienced within the body, we have this irregular body. That's now we say the analytical methods may become uh, deficient. Okay. So, so far so good. Let me, uh, we are moving, we are about to, to conclude this session because I wanted to be just a single hour as an introduction, basic today, no mathematics. So, because from next week, we'll be having now the real calculation. So how do we generate finite element equations? Now, there are two ways. And uh, one of them is what we call the, the force or the flexibility method. Remember, what are these equations? We say they are simple algebraic equations we want to generate. There will be so many, but they are just simple algebraic equations. So the force or the flexibility method, this one, we they use the internal force as the unknown of the problem. So you first use the equilibrium equation. Then due to compatibility, compatibility is, is the condition that ensures that the joints remain connected, right? So if our structure, I like using a simple truss because I know this is the one that you are introduced to in structural analysis. So if there is load applied here, okay, our structure is uh, simply supported here. Let me just make it uh, indeterminate. Then um, we say there is the deformation occurring. So maybe our structure now will deform something like that. Something like that, okay? This is just an, est an estimation, eh? okay? So what we are saying is that at this point, at this point, because of the condition of compatibility, the joints do not separate, they remain together. So we can apply those conditions, assuming the joint displacement is equal, so that we introduce now that condition, we are able to obtain a set of algebraic equations. So we use equilibrium equation and compatibility condition to be able to come up with and we assume internal forces as unknown. So we can assume that we know the displacement, but the internal forces are not known. Now, the second method, which we are going to use in this class, is uh, what we refer to as the displacement or the stiffness method. Now, this displacement, we assume the displacement at the nodes are unknown. And this is why in most cases you are told to calculate what is the displacement at this node. Again, you use the compatibility conditions, so equations, and then the governing equation of equilibrium. So either way, both of them look similar, but the approach is, is slightly different because this one, the first one assumes unknown forces, internal forces. The second one assumes unknown displacement. But both of them are what we call the direct approaches. The direct approaches. We are assuming some unknowns and unknowns. And uh, so the first method is direct approaches. Eh? How we generate the equation. Then, then the other approach of generating these equations eh, is the through variational method. Through variational method, variational methods. This one I don't want to go so much into details, eh? because we are going to employ this. Eh? We are going to employ this method. But variational method, you talked of the principle of potential energy. So they apply, they are this one. The advantages of variational method is that they are applicable for both the structural and structural problems. But the directly approaches mostly are applicable in structural analysis or in structural engineering cases. So uh, you talked of minimum potential energy, the principle of virtual work in the area of structures three. So 
the how we generate the equation from this method, we call them the variational method. And again, let me just stop there. I don't want to confuse you today. We we'll see later on. But this method, uh, it's it's used in uh, the other field, mostly used in another field of of engineering. Now, to sum up my my work, eh, I want to see final step on how. What are the steps, the general steps that we follow in coming up with finite element equations? Using the direct stiffness method, one is you discrete size and you select the element type. Once discretize element type, discretize so discretization is breakdown. So what are we saying here? So you select the element type that you are going to have. For example, if you have a beam eh, or a plane strain, eh, a plate, eh, of course, this one will be 2D element. For the truss, it will be 1D element. And we are going to see how we go about it. It depends on what, what quantity you are calculating. Eh? So once you break it down, the uh, complex body, you select the element type. That's the first step. Two. You are going to select a displacement function. This one, I want to, uh, to put it on hold, displacement, because it's very important. We are going to see the equation y is equals to mx plus c. If we are talking of displacement using finite element method, we want to see what is the typical displacement. u is equals to, maybe if this is direction y and this direction x, of course, it will be related with AX plus something like BX, uh, BY or something like that. Eh? So that's a displacement function. We are going to see how we derive this later on. Then three, you define constitutive relation. Constitutive relation is the, the relationship between the material, material characteristic. Okay. Like uh, for the case of, of a truss, not a truss. I'm, I'm getting carried away by the truss. Eh? Remember the steel? You had this kind of a curve, marred steel, eh? so which relates stress to strain. Of course, this region, we have the, 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 the Young's modulus E being the constant of proportionality up to a certain point here. Then from here is the plastic region going like that. So this material behavior, is what we call the constitutive relation because it will determine this element have got this material behavior. It will help us decide or no, because this is for steel. For concrete, something like that. So they are different. For, 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 for maybe like stainless steel, we do not maybe have this region. So this material relationship is what we call as constitutive relation. And this is why now, when I started, I said this course can help you advance in uh, your fifth year project to do numerical analysis. But once you have this kind of a problem, you have to go to the lab to obtain what is the material characteristic. You have to conduct basic test of material. Then you can have a model that you are going to input or material model that you're going to use in your analysis. So much technical jargon? I hope not. So far, so good. Eh? Then. Uh, Let's see. After that, step number three. So these are the, like the, the tools that you should have or you, should, you will be having, you'll be calculating as you gear towards doing your analysis using this finite element method. So uh, the other, now step four, you derive elemental stiffness matrix. Elemental stiffness matrix. Now here you should start getting excited because Finite element analysis is just this. Hook's law. F is equal to KU. You are determining displacement. Using the, the direct stiffness method, we said we assume unknown displacement. So these uh, displacement are unknown. Then uh, the external forces are given. So to be able to solve the, this unknown, first we get the elemental stiffness matrix. So once you have discretized that, that you have this single element, what is the stiffness matrix? So we are going to see how to come up with the elemental stiffness matrix. 
So remember now we are going to be dealing with the matrix like that for different types of element, both 1D, 2D, and 3D. Then uh, step number four is, or five, sorry. Now, once you've determined the element stiffness matrix, you go ahead now for all the element that you have, you assemble together. You have determined the stiffness matrix for each individual element after you have broken down or discretized your body. Then you, you, you need to bring them back to, because we are analyzing the body as a whole. So you bring now what you call the assembly stage. So finite element is two ways. Break down, you handle the, uh, the element by getting the elemental stiffness matrix. Then from there, you assemble for the whole body and introduce now the boundary condition. Step number six. Now, so for unknown degrees of freedom, because now the degrees of freedom here are displacement. Maybe you want to know the displacement at this. Uh, you want to know the displacement maybe at this part. Okay. Finally, uh, number seven, after you have gotten uh, the unknown degrees of freedom, now you can now take an individual element because you might want to know what is the stress in this member. Because when we know the stress, we can get the area. With the area, we can be able to calculate what is the cross-section size of the tibia truss that we need to use there, or a steel section, okay? Finally, you interpret your result. Of course, this is basic. You have your results, you need to know what they mean, eh? Because garbage in, garbage out. These days, as I told you as we, when we are starting, students want to rush to softwares. But the, the software, even if they now now, now you, you, you use uh, the most advanced or complicated the software, let's say like, like Revit structure to analyze, if you give trash to it, it will give out result. And softwares don't always, uh, they don't tell you about the errors which are related to, they can tell you the errors maybe in modeling, if you have left a boundary condition. But if you input wrong, wrong, uh, wrong, it might analyze just like that. So you need to interpret and understand the result. You know, you need to know what is the expected uh, displacement. Okay. Higher. Then, um, okay. So that, that one uh, is, this is the outline of the, the steps that you shall be following. So you'll be starting with a breakdown. We uh, derive a displacement function. We know the material characteristics that we need to use. The relationship, the material characteristics between stress strain, elemental stiffness matrix we compute. Then we introduce boundary correlation and we have the assembly. We determine for unknowns, elemental stresses and strains. Then we interpret our results. Now that brings me to towards the end of my lecture for today. As I said, I want it to be very simple for your understanding because from next week we start doing mathematics. So as an exercise for today, you need to revisit your notes on matrices because we shall be doing a lot of matrix operations. For example, you need to know what are the type, different types of matrices, null, unit, identity, sigura, etc. You need to know how to operate on matrix. For example, addition, subtraction, cross products, dot products, how to transpose a matrix, how to determine an inverse, how to get the determined dominant of matrix, hmm? the Moivre's theorem, Gauss method of, uh, is it called Gauss? Simultaneous equation maybe for three unknowns. So that's the first step. And uh, the, the, is it the first or the second uh, reference? The reference by Dari Logan, eh? I believe it should be the first one that I gave you. The book by Dari Logan, I'm going to give you. Uh, it have got an appendix, appendix A, almost uh, 30 pages, eh? but it's very simplified. With, like they have refreshed the mind of, uh, of, of a student or a learner so that they can be able to, to know or they can be able to, to refresh the course they learned in uh, matrices. Eh? So go through it. Don't take too much time, but uh, go through it. Just refresh how you go to handle matrices. Because as we go in this course, we are going to handle uh, cover quite a, a lot. Eh? So you might not be able to be explaining the, the basics that you learned earlier on about matrices. Number two of one exercise, this one you should do it as soon as possible before I give you an assignment. So you install Abacus. Student version is available for free. You just need to register an account. 
So I might share the link. If you don't get it, I can share the link where you need to go create an account. Then install. This software is about um, 1 million or uh, they are about. So getting an uh, institutional copy, if we rely on the department to buy for us, maybe we might be in trouble. Eh? <laughs> but the student version, it has the limitation because we can only go up to, I think, 1,000 nodes. But that would be enough for our demonstration purposes. But when we go, if you can be able to get, uh, there are some people who have friends who have uh, the recent version. Eh? We are, we, we're going to see that. But for uniformity, let everyone of you have this. If your computer disturbs you, go to the laboratory and install in one of the computers which you shall be using. So that's the end uh, from my side. And uh, now I would like to welcome any comment. Any comments or question?